Um, it says the, and I'm, I don't know. That's how it said? Oh. But they said, say the second coming. That's fine. I, that's why I'm not, you, you guys get the idea. It was supposed to be a picture of Christ and it's supposed to be the second coming. Um, uh, let's read the verse. Let's start with the verse and then I'll go and explain um, what the Lord had laid on my heart. If you can't, go with me to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6, and I want you to look at verse 37. Verse 37. Yeah, there it is, the second coming. And if you have it on the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 37, let me put on my reading glass right here, and it says, All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we had to be in worship, in giving, now hearing the word of God, Lord. I just ask that you give me clarity of thought and speech, as for my hearers to hear, Lord, give me the satisfaction, Lord, that what I said today was your word and not my opinion. I ask this in Jesus' name. I ask you to bless those here, Lord, that don't know you, that they will come to know you, Lord. And those that are discouraged for whatever reason, Lord, that you will take away the discouragement, Lord, and restore their joy. And for those of us that are living on the mountain, Lord, that you take us to the next part of the mountain, Lord so we can get a greater revelation of who you are, Lord, to understand what your will in our life. We pray that prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, we're asking for your will this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may take your seats. Um, it's for me, it's kind of hard sometimes to talk about prophecy because I'm, I'm, you know, for a lot of you, you know, you know, I'm old this year. I think I'm 62 this year. But 62 years of my life has been in this church. This is all I know is this church, the Apostolic Assembly and the Faith in Christ Jesus. And um, growing up in church, you know, and, you know, some of you don't even, if I told you about the 70s, you'd probably look at me and say, no, Brother Dan, yeah, I remember the 70s. And I remember brothers would preach about the coming of the Lord. And they were so sure that the Lord was going to come in the 70s. And when the 80s came around, the same brothers were preaching the same message, but they say it was going to happen in the 80s. I remember one pastor uh, that um, we got married at his father's church. Now he's a pastor, but at that time he was a minister. And he told me that me and Sister Jenny weren't going to see our honeymoon because the Lord was going to come in our wedding. And, you know, I don't know if he was joking, if he was prophesying. All I know is I got two boys. So what happened? You know, people are saying God's coming, God's coming. No one knows when he's coming. And I'm not against prophecy. I think it should be preached. I think there's two types of eschatology. Eschatology means the last things. There's a general eschatology where we come up here, we'll take a chart, and we'll explain it from Genesis to Revelation. But right now, I want to make this a personal eschatology. I want to talk about the second coming. But in it, I want to talk about two phrases. I want to talk about when the Lord comes for us, the rapture, and when he comes back the second time, when he comes back to judge. You know, I'm not going to tell you where the, the mark of the beast is, or I'm not going to tell you if um, there's going to be a nuclear war in the Middle East. You know, I think sometimes we look at the wrong things. You know, I think sometimes we look at things, and if you say to yourself, if I knew the day that Jesus would come, I would give my heart then. And you know, the truth of it is, man, if you haven't gave your heart to the Lord, you're not going to give your heart to the Lord. That is just the truth. You know what it says right in this verse I said. Look at what I said. Hear it one more time. All that the Father gives giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. That when we come to Jesus Christ, when we come to him, 
It's continually. It's just not coming one time. It's just not saying a prayer. It's just not repenting and tears coming down our life. It's a daily. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's your job. You know, I know um, we, we talked earlier about Brother um, Ruben working for Calchine, but Calchine isn't his job. His job is to follow Jesus Christ. And even though Sister Maria is a grandmother and mother, no, her job is to follow her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And those of you that you think, well, I'm going to get one day in my life when everything's going to fall into place, Brother Dan, and that's when I'm going to make the effort. When I make that big money, that's when I'm going to give the offering. When I get that big money, I saw I'm going to buy the church, buy a church for the pastor. I'm telling you, he doesn't want you to buy a church. He doesn't want you to give money. What he wants you to do is to follow him. Take up your cross and live for him. Live for him when it's now. Live for him when it's not good in this country. But live for Jesus Christ. Not just for a day. Not just for three days. Not for a week but for the rest of your life. You should say Jesus today, Jesus tomorrow, and Jesus till he comes. That's what we should do. We should want to live for the Lord because he's good and because if you continue with him, he will not cast you away. He will not cast you out. Here is God calling you with the voice of Jesus Christ and he's saying, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But for some reason, your eyes are focused on the things that are happening around this world. Some men, they're focusing on an election. Will it be Biden or will it be the felon? I don't know. Some men are, are, are worried about what they're doing in Sacramento. They're, they're raising prices. Uh, they're, they're baiting and switching, and we don't know if they're taking more money from us or they're tripled it. We don't know. We don't know. But our hope is not in government. Even though we should be involved in our government, our hope is not in presidents. Yes, you should go vote. If you don't vote, a silence, you're sealing a nail in your coffin because there's going to come a day when they're going to take away our rights that we can come in public and worship Jesus Christ. Oh, they don't care if you worship Buddha. They don't care if you worship Allah. They don't care if you worship confusion. They don't even care if you worship Satan. But it's amazing when you say the name of Jesus, demons tremble. Sinners get upset. Atheists Atheists yell, but there's power in the name of Jesus. You know, I was looking at this verse here, you know, and this is John's perspective. You know, just look at some verses with me. Just follow me in your Bible. Look at verse 40. 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone would seize the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise up at the last day. Look at 44. No man comes to me except the Father which has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. You know, verse 54. Whoever eateth my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. You know, there's a come a day when it's going to be the last day. And you won't have an opportunity. You won't have that opportunity to raise your hand. You won't have the opportunity to come to an altar of repentance. When he comes, look at what he says right here about him. You know, sometimes we ask ourselves, well, what's God's will for me? And this is the will of God for you. If you just go one chapter in chapter 6, I mean, just go a couple verses up to verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that he believe on him whom he has sent. The work of God is to believe on Jesus Christ. Some of us were trying to be good. Some of us were trying to be this Christian that 
It's not even according to scripture. If we're going to follow him, we want to follow the Jesus in the Bible that says that we're saints. We're part of the household of God. We're a part of that eternal kingdom that our hope is not on this planet called earth, but our hope is in the heavens where Jesus Christ dwells. Amen. Sometimes we forget where we're going. Sometimes we're looking at the American dream, and now the American dream is becoming the American nightmare because they took the God of that dream out of the dream. There's nothing this world is going to satisfy you. There's no pleasure in this world that's going to fulfill you. The only one that can fill you is Jesus Christ. God's giving you a spirit, and that spirit is made in the image of God. That's why he says we're in his image, and the only one that can satisfy it is God. You know, sometimes I say things just to be humorous, but a lot of you have been putting that burrito in your heart, and all you're getting is heartburn because the burrito doesn't go into the heart, it goes into the stomach. What goes in the heart is the Holy Spirit of God, where your life becomes new. Your life has a different meaning. You know what, you're not following uh, the will of man, but you're following the will of God. You're saying, Brother Dan, I wanna be a good Christian, then we'll do the work of God. And the work of God is for you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him and live for him for the rest of your life. That is the work of God. And I think that's what the Apostle John wants to understand. He wanted to understand that there was gonna come a day when the trumpet is going to sound. There was going to come a day that we're going to be called up. But you know what? Before that day comes, we got to do the work. And this work is not trying to earn your salvation. This work is learning to live in the presence, in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let's go to a, another verse. Let's look at from Paul's perspective. Let's look at from the Apostle Paul's perspective. Go with me to um, 2 Thessalonians. No, it's not going to be 2. Well, yeah, let's go to 1 Thessalonians first. I, I didn't write down the verse, but I know what I want. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And then you follow me. I'm going to read it from verse 1 of chapter 5 to verse 10. So write these down, these verses. You know, you always want to tell people about something. You know, tell them about the sermon. You know, this is a good way to, to get the gospel into them. Amen. But of that time and season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, I don't think it's going to happen at night. I don't think it's going to, don't know if it happened during the day, but it's the nature of what's going to happen. He's going to come when you least expect it. You know, I don't know if anyone's there had anything broken into. I don't know if anyone had their house broken into or you probably participated in a robbery or two in your lifetime. I don't know. But when you're robbing somebody, don't you do it when they don't know that you're not there? You know, you, you go to that house, you know, you get the smallest kid on the block. You tell him, hey, man, I'll give you a five-cent bubble gum if you call through that window. I think you could fit through it. And that kid crosses that window for you. Next day, you know it, you rob the house because they weren't there. Ask the police officer. He knows he's a cop. He could tell you the story. I bet Monty could tell you stories like that. Little kids on the block, minding their own business, playing marbles. And next day, you know it, they're in juvenile hall because they were running with the wrong guys. It happens. It happens. You know, some of us, we lived in areas where we had that kind of influence there. But all I'm saying is if you knew, you know, not that I'm putting Brother Reuben on the spot, if you knew they were going to steal your truck. But they stole it, huh? And you, you didn't understand, right? And you say, man, that was quick. That's how the coming of the Lord's going to happen when you least expect it. He's not going to come when it's good. He might come when it's bad. He's not going to come when you're well. He might come when you're sick. 
But my thing is, is that you need to be ready that you're not caught unprepared as the thief that's trying to break into your house. You need to be ready because the Lord is coming back. Amen. Then he says here and look at verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction came upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You know, it's going to happen. For those that are not prepared, it's destruction. It's like when a woman is about to give birth and that, that water bag breaks and, and they need to go to the hospital and then next thing you know what, that, that agony, that agony that, that comes with child labor. You know, you know, I thank God for that one reason. I'm a man. I don't get this generation that we're living in. Maybe I, I just haven't woke up yet. I'm going to stay unwoke. But all I know is that that the sisters go to an experience that should tell you that when it happened, you can't tell the baby to stop. Could you see when baby Josie was born and Brother Dylan trying to push her back up in there and say, wait, a couple more weeks. No, it doesn't happen like that. That water breaks, the pains come, but you know what, praise the Lord, there's a beautiful baby over there. But the Lord's trying to give you ideas. He's he using things that we can understand. Some of you have gone through birth. Some of you have gone through the pain. But I'm telling you, just as you've gone through that pain, that should remind you that there's a day when you least expect it, that it could be the last day, that the Lord has come. Amen. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of the light, and as children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for our helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but unto the attained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whatever we awake or we sleep, we should live together with him. Amen. Even when you're asleep, you should live for Jesus. You know, there, you know, grew up you know, in my house, you know. Um, you know, for us, um, church <laughs> was our job. You know, my mom started getting ready on um, Saturday night. You know, the last program we would see as a family be Lawrence Welk and off to bed, you know. And, and then in the morning we get ready and um, everything would have been ready in the nighttime. My dad would make us some crema weed and boom, we were off to church. But you know, that was my upbringing. And you know, I know some people talk about their upbringing growing up in church, but I thank God that my mother got up. I thank my God that my mom didn't wait for the last moment to get ready for church. I thank God that my mom already was planning, you guys are going to church, you're not staying home, you know. I would beg her sometime, and I would say, please, Mom, I want to go riding with my friends. But she said, no. But I thank God, because every time I go to the altar and I see my mother's face, because she told me no, I can raise my hands in this house and say, you know what? I serve the God of my mother. I serve the God of my father. And you know what? It's been 40 two years and I still want to serve him. I want to serve him today. I want to serve him tomorrow. I want to serve him to come. Has there been problems? Yes, there's been problems. Have there been ups? Yes, there's been ups. Have there been sickness? Yes, there has been sickness. But you know what? Jesus lives inside of me. And for me, you know, like it says, I want to be sober. I don't want to let my pain hinder me from the kingdom of God. I don't want to let suffering hinder me when the trumpet sounds. I don't want to be caught unaware like a thief. 
I don't want them to come and rob my blessing or my salvation. I want to be sober. I want to be vigilant. I want to follow the Lord. You know, in this verse, you know, Paul says some things. He said, rest. You're struggling right now. You need to rest in the Holy Ghost. You need to rest in the presence of God. You know what? You're going to be revealed. It's revealed what's inside of you. I am always remember this illustration that I was taught from my teacher in Bible school, Brother Saul Avila. He said he got a, told a story about an orange. And he said when he got the orange, this orange, he stuck a needle in it and black ink came out of it. And he was telling me that that orange wasn't an orange. And it's true. When you peel an orange, it should be sweet. Ink shouldn't come out of it. Well, that's the same way with us. When I tell you that God wants fruit out of your life, when he cuts you and, and, and the sword of trials come and he cuts you because he wants to taste the fruit of your life. If he's tasting oil, is he tasting disgust? Oh, he's tasting the precious faith that you believe in him and those sacrifices of pray when it's difficult to open your mouth and you're worshiping him and you're honoring him and that fragrance from your life and he renews you with the Holy Ghost. Talks about the angels. You know, let's look at it. Go with me to Second um, Timothy, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm going to read 7 and 10, the first, um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 7 and 10. Write these down if you, if you can, please. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire or taking vengeance on them that know not God, and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saint and to be a, a mire, a, what does it say? A mire in all of them that believe because our testimony among you, you believe in that day. And that's Paul. He had preached to the Thessalonians. He had started that church. And you know what? They believed him, but they were suffering persecution. But he said, don't worry, rest, 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 because it's going to be revealed that those that are persecuting, those that are living for God, they're going to be judged. You know, when it talks about the angels here, the angels are not coming for us. When I read that verse in Thessalonians, it says, and the dead in Christ, shall rise first, and we which are remaining shall be caught up in the air with the Lord. That's what it says. It says when the Lord comes and that trumpet is sound, it said those that die in the faith, they're going to raise up to immortality. And those which are remaining, us that are alive, if God grants us that opportunity that we don't close our eye in death, but still, even if we're dead in this body, is to be present with the Lord, but yet to be caught up with them in the air. That's our hope, that when the trumpet sound and the dead are risen, that we are caught up with him. But when it talks about the angels, you know, let's look at it. Look at, go with me to Matthew Chapter um, 25, verse 31. I think this is the chapter that Brother um, Alvarez's father preached, and it, it touched Sister um, Maria's heart. It talks about the goats and the sheep. Uh, let's go to um, 25, verse 31. Look what it says. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his old holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the, the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep 
from the goats. You don't want to be a goat. You know what goat is good for? What's goat good for, Brother Saul? Media. That's it. That's all goats are good for. No, I don't want to be a goat. I want to be a sheep. I want to go into the kingdom of God. But it said that he's going to send his angels, and they're going to get those ones that weren't living right. And, and, and there's a judgment waiting for them. But look at us. When it talks about that, it goes with me to Ephesians. And goes with me to chapter 2. You know, some of us, we get discouraged. You know, we struggle. Hey, but you're fighting. That's all that counts. You're making the effort to come. You're trying to be continuous. You're trying to be persistent in your faith. It's not always easy. It's not always a feeling. It's not always a good worship. It's just you knowing that, hey, I'm going to live for the Lord. I said I follow him, and I'm going to follow him for the rest of my life. Look what he says right here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses, I think it's 7 and 10. Look what he says. That in the age to come, that's the future life. You know when I've read this chapter 2, I told you about the past life the present life, but I want you to understand there's a future life, and this is the future life. Look at it, hear it, that in the age to come, he might show his exceedingly riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not a worse lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. You know, do you get that? When you give your heart to the Lord, the Lord already got the road for you to follow? Here you are, you're doing all this crazy stuff, going, I'm not wrong to go to conferences, but there's some people, all they want to do is live in conventions. You can't live in convention. You got to live in your local assembly. You got to read the word of God. You got to go to study. Look at this couple of hours that we do on Sunday. It's not enough for you. Two hours and you think that's going to keep you out of, out of hell? Come on. You got to be a little bit more. You got to find it. You know, I don't want you to go to any church because not every church is healthy. But you need to go to a healthy church where they have a healthy ministry that they operate in those gifts. Not that they follow titles. You know what today is all about your title. I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm a pastor. No, you know what? I'm a saint. And you know what? I'm going to encourage you. I'm like a beggar telling another beggar where he can find bread. That's my job. My job is to lift you up and not to lord order you. My job is not to tell you what's right or what's wrong because God's given you the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you live for him, he's going to tell you what's right and he's going to tell you what's wrong. When it comes to the kingdom of God, it's not living in the United States. Here you vote every four years for a president, and they promise you a pack of lies. He is king of kings and lord of lords. And if you're in his kingdom, then you got to submit to his kingship. So don't come around here and say, well, I don't feel it. Hey, it doesn't have to do with feeling. It's about obeying. Obey the word of God. Obey the word of God. Not men. Men come and go. Some men are strict. And you're going to do things just because they're strict. I want you to do it because you love Jesus Christ. I want you to do it that you see that God's working in your life. I want to see when you go through the trial and you're crying. And I'm going, good. They needed that. I'm not no shame in my game. When you're over there crying and you feel feeling sorry, but I'm going to say, yeah, it hurts, huh? But wait and see what's going to happen. And you're going to come back. Yeah, this is it, God. I'm not going to go back to church. I'm going to live for the devil. No, you're not. You're going to come up here. He touches you, and then you say, you know what? I'm going to go back and fight again. You know what? You're going to fight until you win. In this church, we do not give up. But in this church, we don't, we, it's not that we condone certain things. We're giving you an opportunity to grow. 
You know, I don't want to be up here and be that guy. Hey, you know what? We're all going to wear ties now. I'm not that guy. But what I want for you to understand is that you have to be consistent in your faith. And living for God, you're going to suffer persecution. I told you a story about my dad. Here, my dad got touched by God. Lord, deal with him. Goes, tells his dad, goes to my grandmother, and they said they loved him more when he was an alcoholic. That was reason enough for my dad to go to the first bar and start hitting that Budweiser. But before he got out of that parking lot, he was going to make a right-hand turn on Wilmington Avenue. A voice spoke for him from heaven. He heard the audible voice of, voice of God because he said he almost wrecked the car. He said, do you remember the promise you made for me? And if I could get God just to do that once in your life, that there's a God, he's real, and he'll tell you how you can live, because you're created in Christ Jesus for good works. Not bad works. Good works. You know, um, when, he, when he gives you the, the Holy Ghost, he gives you joy. When, when, when things go bad, he gives you peace. When we, when we sing, and, and, and even with the limitations that we have with music, but yet still God honors us. He doesn't look at the, the CD. He doesn't care what video there. But all of us from our hearts, we begin to make melody. And, 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 and he begins to listen. He says, those are my children there in Upland, the bridge, and they're worshiping me. And he begins to move among us with his nail scar hand. He's going to move at the altar. He's going to touch you. He's going to renew you. He's going to fill you. And he's going to touch you with his nail scar hands. That's what he's going to do. Let's um, look at the next one. Jesus' words. We're almost done here. Look at Jesus' words. You know, you heard the Apostle John, that he will no wise cast you out. You heard Paul. You know, you got to rest. Got to rest in God. He's going to be revealed. His angels. But you know what? We're not looking for angels. We're looking for a trumpet that when we rise up with him. Um, go with me to Matthew now. Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew. Okay. Let me see. Um, 37. He answered unto me. He said. Ooh. Let's do it. He answered and said unto them. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 37. He answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And therefore the tares are gathered and burned in fire. So shall it be the end of this world. You know, I, I, I think about that. You know, sometimes you don't understand it. If you don't make a decision for Jesus Christ, well, you're not ignorant now. You know. You know, the, the, there's good seed and bad seed. You know, I want to be of the good seed. You know, uh, when he comes and, and, and they do their work and they gather me, I want to go into the barn. I don't want to go into the oven. You don't know, know about you, but I want to meet the maker, not the baker. I want to meet him. And that's why you have to be faithful. I'm not trying to scare you. Those are Jesus' words. Look what he said. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. It says, For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, 
and whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he, gain, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. Amen. That's what's going to happen. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 24. These are Jesus' words. He's warning us. There's a last day coming. And we can't be unaware. Look at what it says in 24. Let's start with verse 35. And what does it say in 35 to 39? For I was, oh, okay, sorry, that's 25. Let me go one more chapter. Worse, there it is. 25, uh, 20, I'm sorry, Matthew 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as it was, as it is, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For in that day that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage until Noah, that day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not, un, not until the floods came and took them away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You know? I don't know when he's coming. I hope it doesn't come through your wedding. I would hate to think Brooke was going to get married. And here she is about to walk down the aisle and then doo -doo -doo -doo. Well, sorry, Brooke, I got to go. I love you, but I'll leave you. <laughs> and then, you know, she's really, oh, no, I'm going to have a wedding. I paid a lot and I got my hair done. I look this good. You kidding? She's going to say, hold my hand, Uncle Brother Dan. Take me with you. We're going with the Lord. But that's how it was. And, and no one's day, they weren't paying attention. They were going to say, who's marrying who? Who bought what? And that's what I want you to understand. It's not wrong getting married. It's not wrong sharing good experience with your friend. But life is more than pleasure. God didn't create you just to go out and have pleasure. No, he wants you to do those things that you're ready that when the kingdom of God will come. Hey, you can go out once in a while, but not every night you have to go out. You plan things. Everything has a purpose. There's some people, all they do, they live for the moment. They don't invest in their eternity. And because they don't invest in eternity, then they're crying. Think, oh, I thought God, no, it doesn't work like that. Don't tell me how God operates if you never read the book. It says that he, he kills and he makes alive. This God that we serve, yes, he loves the sinner, but he still judges sin. And if you continue in sin, the wage of the sin is death. And I can't help you. If you close your eyes without Jesus Christ, I can't help you. But if your ears are open and your eyes are open, I have the word of God right here, and we can help you. Amen. That's what the word of God does. Let's look at what Peter says. Peter even wanted to get involved with this. Look at what he says. And then we're going to the last one will be John. I'm going to Peter. You're going to go to 2 Peter. Second um, Peter chapter 3. And I think it's um, 9 to 16. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God right there. He doesn't want you to be lost. He wants you to repent. He wants you to do the work of God. He doesn't want you to be good. He wants you to believe in Jesus Christ, who will make you good. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, 
in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth and also the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner or person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? When it says conversation the good, in the King James, it means your lifestyle, your manner of living. Then he says, um, Look, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what we're looking for. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye Look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found in peace without spot or spot and blameless. And the account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved Paul, also according to the wisdom given to him, has written unto you, and also. In all of his epistles, speaking of things, these things in which, as some things are hard to understand, which they that are unlearned, unstable wrestle, and they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. A lot of people don't understand this. They read things, they don't understand it, they don't ask the Spirit of God. They go buy a study Bible, and next year, you know, they're, they're, they're teaching things that are not in harmony with Scripture. No, let the Spirit of God teach you. He's telling you. It's a day coming like a thief. Fervent heat, fire. I don't want to imagine it. I didn't want to put pictures as it what it might look like. Pictures don't even describe, but yet I want you to hear with your ears, there's a day of judgment. Let's go to your, uh, John again. Let's go to Revelation. Look what he says in Revelation chapter 1. Look what he says. Behold, he cometh with the clouds. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. It's talking about the Jews right there. And all kindred of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. We're all going to see it. When that trumpet's going to sound, the dead are going to rise. We're going to be caught up. It's going to happen. But when the world sees him, it's going to be judgment. The fervent heat, the fire, it's going to happen. And yet, I feel like I'm Noah, that I'm in the ark. And I'm telling you, be citizens of righteousness. Let God do his righteous work in you. Let's close this. You can all stand now. I'm going to read um, Titus, and this will be the last verse. This is another verse that you should um, keep. Mark it down. This is who we're looking for. Titus chapter 2, starting with verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worthy lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. That's how we should live. We should be godly people. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. 
let no man despise thee. Yeah, people are going to dislike you. That's good. Dislike me. But I'm looking. You know, when I read that verse, I remember when I worked at Cal West with um, Brother Isaac, you know. At that time, he was my boss. And we'd be there early in the morning, you know. He, sometimes he'd be there at 5 in the morning with us, you know. He's going through the, the fa factory, seeing things. I'd be in the yard. And then I would look at him. I said, hey, look at the east. And he would look, and he's looking up there. And he said, what'd you see? I'm saying, that's when Jesus is coming. He's coming from that way. Every morning when I go to the yard, I would look. He's going to come today. He's going to come today. I'm looking. I'm just saying, are you looking? What are you looking for? Tell me what you want. You really is a house? Come on, man. You don't want a house. You want a mansion. Come on, really. What do you want? Money? The economy, the way everything's going? No, there's, where we're going, there's streets of gold. Walls of jasper, gates of pearl. It's a city where the people that live there are not ashamed to be called the children of God. Is it easy to be called the children of God down here? Sometimes we get a little nervous. We get a little, uh, our, our, our tongue gets dry. We get kind of, oh, no, I want to push my faith on nobody. No, I want to go where I'm not ashamed to serve the Lord. If I'm not, I can't do it up there. I got to do it down here. And sometimes it's not comfortable living for Jesus. But you got to. Why? Because when he presents us up there, there's no more evil, no more sickness, no more pain. I'm in pain. My back hurts. My foot hurts. Sometimes my bones hurt. But you know what? Praise the Lord. I have a body that's made for me. It's prepared by him. I'm going to be faithful. Is it easy? No. Do I want to quit? Yes. But I just love him too much. Do you love him? He's calling you. He wants to do a work for you. Why not do it today? Don't let it be that last day where you can't do nothing. Don't let it be the other where the trumpet sounds and we rise and we go with him. The altar is open. Won't you make a way and come and find a place to pray? Don't be ashamed. Come up here. Let's pray. Let's seek the Lord. God's dealing with some of you. You know you've been struggling about following Jesus Christ. You just need to ask him, you know, what do you want from me? And I know if God speaks to you, he's going to say, I want your sin. You give me your sin, and I'll give you a new life. That's what he'll do. Let's just worship him. I'm going to ask Brother Dylan if Dylan can put the altar call song on. Don't be ashamed. I would anoint you with oil, but I think it's in the back. So we're just going to go. I'm just going to put my hands on you like that in faith. Let's all pray. Let's come in. Let's just seek the Lord right now. Let the music.